To thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, Surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. My Freely give, I will forever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender. To thee, my blessed Savior, I, I surrender all, all to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I, I surrender all. Your glory, you're the Lord most high. There's no other God like you, yeah. There's no other king like you. You heal all diseases, Savior of all sin. You're the Lord most high. There's no other God like you, yeah. There's no other king like you. You heal all diseases. Savior of all sin. You're the Lord most high. There's no other God like you, yeah. There's no other king like you. You heal all diseases. Savior of all sin. You're the Lord most high. There's no other God like you, yeah. There's no other king like you. So we breathe you in. Breathe.
Cause all the earth is filled with your glory. You're the Lord most high. We give God all the praise. Blessings to everybody. We give God all the glory. Well, saints, here we are. I tell you one thing. The Holy Ghost said, we stepping into our new year at 12 midnight tonight. We stepping into 2022. I'm telling you what the Spirit of the Lord told me. Saints, I, I want you all remember this as well. I'm not going off no Jewish calendar. <laughs> I'm not going off no Jewish calendar, I promise you. I'm going off Jesus' calendar. I'm going off the great God Jehovah calendar. And those of you all that's in the spirit, just hear me what I'm telling you. We are stepping into the new year on this midnight. Saints, I was telling my people, watch how it starts to rain in your region. If you're watching me right now, watch how rain comes to your region. Some of you are on here. Rain it is often a symbol that the father uses to ex also express where he is emotionally. It could be for bad, it could be for good. But I know in this time, for those of you all that will choose to walk after the spirit, what did Romans 8, 1 say? There's no condemnation to those that walk after the spirit, not after the flesh. Romans 8, 5, going after the spirit, minding the things of the spirit. For those of you all that's in the spirit, Galatians 5, 16, 17, talking about walking in the spirit. Galatians 5, 22, talking about fruit of the spirit. Those of you all that's in the spirit, just know that we're entering into our new year, midnight. Just remember what I'm telling you, because there's a portal open up today. Now, saints, I want to say something to you that the father gave me a powerful revelation about birthdays. Because when a when a when a when a birthday comes, especially for a leader, a leader to a nation, a leader to nations, a leader that has um, a great mantle on him to reach souls in massive manner, when a birthday is present, that's also a birthday for you into another dimension. It's a birthday to walk into another glory, to walk into another provisional place, another relationship place with the Father in heaven. So it's, it's significant, it's not just a birthday Meaning like, okay, somebody just come to the earth, but is a significance. If you remember Moses's birthday, it was a supernatural shifting, meaning that Pharaoh's kingdom is coming down. Think about this. Moses's birthday means that Pharaoh's kingdom is coming down. So when um, Pharaoh's kingdom is set, now... Moses' birth comes to upset it. Jesus' birthday came to upset Herod's kingdom. Think about this, people of God. If you look in the book of Acts, what happens? The angel of the Lord comes down and struck Herod. But see, King Jesus' birth ushered that in. Glory to God. Daniel's birthday was to bring the, the Babylonian system into judgment. That's why Nebuchadnezzar was like an animal in the field. You see that? And God judged him. The presence of Daniel is there. Now, I'm showing you all throughout the word of God, birthdays. Adam's birthday was really supposed to terrorize darkness on the earth. Are you seeing that? So when Adam sinned, Adam corrupted birthday. 
So when Adam sinned, he corrupted birthday, right? So now everybody that's birth, I think that's Psalm 51 that talk about they born of sin, born in, uh, uh, born in sin. Now I think that's Job. It talks about that man is full of trouble. But when we deal with the birthday, it was corrupted by Adam. So everybody, when they're born, they deal with that corruption in their birth. You see what I'm saying? So here's the powerful thing. King Jesus represented the restoration of birthday. Watch what happened. When King Jesus is coming, look what takes place. The star in heaven, which the book of Revelation reveals that stars in the heaven represent angels. The star leads the wise men to King Jesus. Now watch this. Why is Jesus in the word of God being given a spectacle concerning his birthday? Because it is the restoration of the portal that occurs on birthdays, especially for someone that's filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's, that's, that's the major difference. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, when you're filled with the Spirit. Now, saints, watch this here. When that occurred in the scripture, now King Jesus, the second Adam, restored back the power of the birthday so that when a man or a woman that has a mantle, a mandate on their life to work the kingdom of heaven on earth and to release kingdom power and glory, when they come into the earth realm, now their birthday, while they're filled with the Holy Ghost, carries a portal for the people of God to come out, come out of their sin, come out of their corruption, come out of their deception, come out of their iniquity, come out of their fear, their poverty, come out of viruses, diseases, curses, witchcraft, satanic altars, everything that will sever the eternal plan for your life. The portal is set. So saints, I want you to see this. Right now, October the 2nd is my birthday according to the natural. But according to the spirit realm right now, the heavens are opened up in order for you to now aggressively and boldly and confidently take a hold what is rightfully yours. You have power from God right now to no longer be stuck into an addiction, no longer be stuck into a bad habit, no longer be stuck into a bad relationship, no longer be stuck into bad mindsets, bad ways, bad words, bad addictions, bad habits, bad uh, uh, associations. This is power right now. My Rabbi Soto, Rebeki, it's power right now to come out. Saints, you can't tell me nothing. I understand portals. I was doing a conference on June the 5th, the day that prophet T.B. Joshua went on to be with Jesus. On June the 5th, and though they call that man, they call him a witch, they call him a warlock. Something wrong with you African prophets. Something wrong with y'all. It's American prophets too, but y'all can't see. How come you can't see your own brother? But there, there's ones that could see according to the spirit, but they fought the man, call him a witch, call him a warlock. Prophet T.B. Joshua. Prophet T.B. Joshua was Moses to our generation. And God took him on June the 5th. Now, meanwhile, I'm in Ohio releasing the power of God, releasing the fire of God. And the word of the Lord came to me and said, son, you know why I took him on this day while you're releasing the power of God in Cleveland, Ohio? Because his mantle, is being transferred, is falling. Now, saints, I could tell you a lot of things, but I ain't going to tell you. I, I, some of y'all can't hear some of that stuff that I was saying. So it, it's not expedient for me to say it like that. But what I can tell you is that the Spirit told me to do a conference on June the 5th. The Spirit had in the schedule to take that 
man of God home on June 5th. Which saints, if you remember what I've been saying, that this year on 2021, it will be judgment for the house of God. Meaning, now saints, when you hear judgment, a lot of people think it's bad, right? Because that's what you've been taught. You've been taught that judgment is bad, but judgment means that God is zooming in on things and making very crucial decisions. That means that God is now examining things very closely and he's got, he has to make a decision. That's what judgment is. So judgment means that God is going to ex 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 exude all of his energy, his focus, his passion into zooming in on something and he's going to make a final decision towards it. Some of y'all don't really catch that sometimes when people die. That God zoomed in on them and decided to take them home. When you see a man of God, sometimes men of God go through a lot of struggles, a lot of fights, a lot of battles, a lot of thorns in the flesh as well. And they get they they want to be with Jesus in this life. If you're really a prophet, you're going to experience people really fighting you, really fighting you extra. You're not going to be able to trust people. You're going, you going you got to have sight. I, I could tell you like this here. You got to have sight. So saints, I have sight. And saints, I, I just want to say this to you. Sometimes I say stuff big and bad about the devil, not just because, you know, but I know that I have the spiritual backing to talk like that. Because see, some of you are, if you start talking that rough talk, Satan will come and try you and, and challenge you and you will lose. You know why? Because you're not really set in your personal life to pray, to seek God, to praise God, to focus on the Lord Jesus in 24 hours and to stay rooted and grounded in Jesus. And so Satan will come and try to mess you up and Satan will actually succeed most times because Satan knows how to aggressively send assaults from every angle until you surrender to Satan. That's what Satan often does. Sometimes people, they go to a degree, they find, they find, they get attacked, they find, they find, they find. Then something happens and they finally break. That's how Satan operates. So if you haven't set your mind with a radicalism about being submissive, patient, yielding, ready, faithful, you'll fall. So you have to have that workout in your soul going on 24 seven. See saints, according to the natural, you can't work out all the time. You could do sit-ups, you could do push-ups, you could, you could, uh, punch him back, punch him back. You could do all that stuff. I remember when we was in school, we used to do this stuff like this. We'll be boxing to, to, to do our speed. You can't do that all the time, but here's what I want you to see. In the, the soulless realm, you have to work out all the time. So saints, even when I'm going to sleep, I meditate a scripture and I'm thinking about it as I'm laying down. I'm thinking about it as I'm laying down. I, I'm meditating on it. I'm talking. See, saints, and I want, I want you to hit my caranda da masia. Robo san de leviosa. Rapa casata man de lemosa. I want you to hear me. I want you to hear me. You have to also learn how to steal your spirit, your soul. Because that's the way that you meditate scripture. That's the way that you become changed. That's how you operate in the spirit. See, some of you all, you have lived out of your flesh. You don't know what it means to steal your soul. You know what that means? You got to calm your soul down and tell it what to do without your mouth. Your mind has a mouth. Your mind has an inward lip that it could talk and communicate and decree things mentally. Since you can't change until you learn how to talk intentionally with your mind mouth. So saints, when I meditate in the word of God, what I'll do, I'll look at something, I'll stare at it. But what I really do, I start talking it with my mind mouth. I talk it with my natural mouth. If the mind mouth, the natural mouth are both saying the same thing, you're delivered. Some of you are, your mouth said, I surrender all. Your mind said, 
Okay, I need to smoke another cigarette. Okay, I need to go call them. Okay, I need to go hang out with them. Okay, I need to watch that again. Okay, I need to go over there again. See, your mind mouth is not in alignment with your mouth mouth. See, saints, King Jesus said, I believe that's Matthew 4, man shall not live by bread alone. I believe that's Deuteronomy 8, verse 3 and on. He quoted Moses, right? But that was his physical mouth. He was already quoting Moses in his mind mouth. So, saints, I want you to see this. If King Jesus is only quoting Moses with the mouth mouth and the mind mouth is not quoting Moses, Satan knows how to go past that mouth mouth and get to the mind mouth and to get the mind mouth to betray the mouth mouth. And so you left saying something, but you're never doing it. You're left with goals, but never achieving it. You're left with desires to seek God, but you never seek him because see the mind mouth and the mouth mouth are not on one accord. The mind mouth needs to submit itself to what the mouth mouth is decreeing from the word. So if you say, I love God, you can't love God with the mouth mouth. The only way you can love God is when the mind mouth start thinking about, I love the Lord. So I have to seek him. I have to run after him. If you only love him with the mouth mouth, the mouth mouth going to trick you and think that you love God until he comes to you and the Holy Ghost gives you a commandment. He calls you to do something. He gives you an instruction. Now you start seeing rebellion inside of you. You start seeing anger. You start seeing resentment and offenses. You start seeing comparison, jealousy, envy, and the works of the devil. Why do you see the works of the flesh rising up in you? Because you only spoke with your mouth mouth. You never spoke with your mind mouth. When the word of God, I believe that's prophet Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. Why? Remember what King Jesus said in the gospels. He said out of the mouth, out of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitfully wicked. King Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So watch this here. If Jeremiah is saying that the heart is deceitful and King Jesus is saying that your mouth speaks out of the abundance of your heart. So how could you speak God, but do Satan? How? How? Because this physical mouth, it has learned to talk. Your heart mouth hasn't. So your mouth could say, you know, I fear God. Since you, you hear rappers say that all the time, right? You know, I don't fear nobody but God. And then you see what type of life they live. <laughs> see, their mouth mouth is saying that they don't fear nobody but God. But their mind mouth, their heart mouth is in covenant with Satan. Since you ever seen somebody do all type of evil and then say, I want to thank God for blessing me. Blessing you? <laughs> My God. Because see, what you have to learn to do is to steal your soul. What does that mean? When I say steal, I don't mean rob. I mean steal, mean bring calmness to your soul. Your soul loves to run. Saints, that's why when the Lord told Jonah to go to Nineveh, he ran. The soul of man loves to run from God. Man don't face God for real, for real. Even with religiosity, even religiosity is Satan's attempt to get man to run from God. Satan's introduction for man to run from God. People run from God through religiosity. The Pharisees was praying on the street corner. They was running from God. Even Satan will have you do spiritual stuff to run from God. Sometimes people in prayer talk about Jesus, 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 Jesus. They're doing all that stuff there because if they steal their soul, Jesus is going to say, you need to forgive that person 
for taking their income tax money. <laughs> Glory to You see? They, they, but they don't want to hear that. So they're being prayer. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Because Jesus is going to start checking you. And how does Jesus check you? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is really Jesus. How he can communicate with your soul while you're in your body. That's what the Holy Ghost is. And saints, I want you to hear this. You know, the biggest lie that Satan is placing in you is making it look like it's hard for you to hear from God. When you came from God is, and God is the greatest communicator, the way that it was supposed to set up was it was supposed to be hard to hear from Satan. But Satan makes it difficult and challenging and overwhelming as if it is hard to hear from God. Now watch this people of God. When really your soul, it is a master of hearing from God. Repentance is the ability to relocate your mastery to hear from God. Repentance is the discovery of how to hear from God in its highest perfected state saints you got to understand repentance is not you becoming whoa repentance is you retrieving i got to teach this different i got to i got to teach this different see you going back in time Saints, do you know what restoration means? It means that something was stored, but it was lost. Restoration means that God is taking what was lost and placing it back in you. Now, saints, what I want you to catch is sin is how Satan steals the God qualities that was implanted in you for God's glory. So every sin that you have struggled with, everything that you have done that you know that God didn't instruct you to do, those things come to numb, to minimize, and potentially eradicate the effectiveness of what God made you to function as, how God made you to think. So watch this here. Psalm 23, David said, he restoreth my what? My soul. Now what, 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 what's the soul all about? The mind. It's the will, your decisions, your choices, because Satan made you a slave to wrong choices. Romans 6.20, Romans 6.20 says that when you were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. That means that the soul was a sinner. Now, when the soul sins, it is at a deficit of divinity. When the soul sins, it's at a deficit for divinity. Divinity is not there. So when David said he restored my soul, remember, why does David's soul need to be restored? Because Satan still wants to intervene. In David's decisions. Remember, he went go number the army. And God said, why did you go? God said, why did you go number the army? That's Satan first getting in David's soulish man. To get his soulish man to think, I need to number the army. I got to make sure I'm straight. Because when, when, the, when, the, when the goons come up on me, I want to make sure I got enough people up in here to defend me. And I want to make sure enough could counteract them. If they get too strong, I want to make sure I got more than enough just in case they ambush us. And now he's operating in the natural. This is the same David that killed Goliath with a sling that had no power. It wasn't the rock. It wasn't the sling. It wasn't nothing. It wasn't the stone. It was simply the spirit of God on the instruction. 
See, all of your battles that you defeat in this life is not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of God. It's not because of education. It's not because you went to school. It's not because you went to the gym. It's not because you went to, to anybody. It's because the Spirit of the Lord has granted you access to victory. That's the only thing that's helping you win in life. You're not winning in life because you went to church. You're not winning in life because you read the Bible. You're winning in life because the Spirit of God is able to grant you victory. So David went from letting the Spirit of God grant him victory from, to, to now trying to gather his victory by natural strength. Natural observation, natural strategy. Saints, you wasn't created to live in the natural. That's why, uh, uh, what, what that is, that's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 5 says that you should not have your faith in the wisdom of men, but the power of God. You're not supposed to have your faith in the, the wisdom of men. The power of God has to be the thing governing your faith. It's the power of God that turns water into wine. It's the power of God that takes leprosy, takes that skin disease and turn it around into baby skin. It's the power of God that took Naaman and after he dipped seven times in that Jordan, it was the Holy Ghost that took his body and revamped it and made it new again. It's the power of the Holy Ghost that makes you a different person. You don't become a different person because you pray a lot, because you fast a lot, because you sow a lot, because you talk a lot. You become a different person because you permit the Holy Ghost to come on the inside to work on the outside, to change the way that you see things, to change the way that you respond, to change the way that you act, the way that you talk, the way that you move. See, you got to pick back your faith in the Holy Ghost. If you pick your faith in the Holy Ghost, you'll never fall. The Holy Ghost never falls. The Holy Ghost never misses. The Holy Ghost never sins. And when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you can't sin. The Bible said what? Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be my witnesses, Acts 1-8. It's the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 19, the apostle is asking them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Because if you say that you believe, even your believing can't change you. Even your believing can't deliver you. Even your believing can't set you free. The Holy Ghost got to come and he got to change the way that you respond with your belief. That's why you see people all the time say, I believe in God. I believe in God. Yeah, you might believe in God, but do you have the Holy Ghost? Because if you believe in God, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to be the one that caused your life to change and conform itself to believe in God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you might say, okay, I believe that Jesus is Lord. But, but if, if you believe that Jesus is Lord, only the Holy Ghost can come and allow Jesus to be Lord over your decisions. Lord over your mindset. Lord over your conversation. Lord over your talking. Lord over your walking. Lord over your schedule. Lord over your future. Lord over all your finances. See, it's the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit don't want you to reject him. What that was, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Makaranda masanda rebesoto. That was Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. That says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, whereby you were sealed for the day of redemption. It's the Holy Ghost that has sealed your eternity. There's not going to be no disappearance of the church uh, that is in rebellion. It's only going to be for the church that's in receptivity. John 1 12 talked about as many as received him. He gave them the power. See, that's the Holy Ghost. Whenever God gives power, it's really his spirit conforming itself with an ability. God granting you an ability via his spirit. Saints, I want you to see this for the rest of your life. Whenever the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you become another person. Whenever the Holy Ghost, it was Saul that when Samuel anointed him, prophesied to him, told him he was going to meet prophets prophesying, told him what he was going to see on his journey as signs and wonders. 
It was then that the Bible said that Saul, when he turned, he became another man. That's the spirit of God. Many people think that the Holy Ghost came in the book of Acts. It wasn't the book of Acts that brought the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was hovering over the waters in Genesis chapter 1. It was the Holy Ghost that took the darkness, eradicated it, chased it off, and produced light. It was the Holy Ghost that took the dirt and made a man and breathed life into him. It was the Holy Ghost that took over that man. But when that man resisted the Holy Ghost, now sin entered into man. Sin entered into the decision making. Sin entered into the mind. It was the Holy Ghost that came upon Jesus. Isaiah 61. Then Jesus stood up and told them, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. It was the spirit of the Lord. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was the one that sent them out two by two and gave them power over darkness. It was the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost. They couldn't do it. It was the Holy Ghost that did it. Saints, in this life, you got to welcome the Holy Ghost. Call the Holy Spirit. Call him. And saints, when you call him, wait for him. What did I read? Psalm 37 verse 34 It says, wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he will exalt you to inherit the land. What happened in the book of Acts? It was over about approximately 120 that was waiting for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost looking for people that will wait for him. That will stand in the gap and say, when you come, I'll be ready. But I'm going to sit right here and observe your precepts. Follow your commandments. Follow your instructions. Follow your will for my life and I'm going to do it until you show up and take me over. I'm going to do it because I believe. But when you come, I'm going to do it because I'm possessed. It's different. I'm going to do it because I believe. But when you come and take me over, now I'm doing it because I'm hijacked. I'm doing it because I'm possessed. I'm doing it because I'm owned in manifestation. See, God already owns you according to divine right. But can he own you according to manifestation? See, a lot of times in your past, you have obeyed God. You obeyed God because you believed. You believed in his concept of love. So if somebody was on the street and they was thirsty, you gave them a walk, cup of cold water because you believed in his concept of love. If somebody was hurting, you tried to comfort them because you believed in his concept of love. If somebody did you wrong, you forgave them because you believed in his concept of forgiveness. But see, when the Holy Ghost come, you ain't got to even think about it. You forgive by default because you're possessed. When the Holy Ghost come, you ain't got to worry about giving somebody a cup of cold water. You give them a cup of cold water by default. You don't have to worry about feeding your enemy. You'll feed your enemy because you do it by default. When the Holy Ghost come, you'll heal the sick and raise the dead by default. You won't need no instructor. You won't need nobody telling you who you are in Christ. The Holy Ghost, John 14, 26, says that he is the comforter. He's going to teach you all things. He's going to bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever Jesus has said unto you. The Holy Ghost is your reminder. He the one that tell you what the will of God is before temptation come. The Holy Ghost is the one that show you the way you should go before you got other options. It's the Holy Ghost that talk to you before you feel weak, before you feel frustrated, before you got anything blocking off your focus, before you're distracted, before you're weary. It's the Holy Ghost that talks to you in your secret place before you gather with people and they tell you another story. They tell you another system of decisions. It's the Holy Ghost that tell you how to do it. And see, saints, when you got the Holy Ghost on you, he will actually possess you to do things that you don't even know why you're doing it. Holy Ghost will have you read stuff in the word. Holy Ghost will have you pray in tongues because there's a car accident scheduled for you 30 minutes after you leave work. The Holy Ghost will tell you not go to the store because there's about to be a shootout at that corner store. Holy Ghost will tell you not to go out at night because somebody's seeking to rob you at night. It's the Holy Ghost that tell you to stay up behind in after midnight because something not right outside. The Holy Spirit will possess you without you even know what he's doing because you have never now been a 
victim of love. That's why Apostle Paul kept saying, I'm a prisoner of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a prisoner. He kept saying, I'm a prisoner. What he's saying, I'm possessed. I'm possessed. How could you be a prisoner? It's because the Holy Ghost is housed in your house. Yeah. Now, now the Holy Ghost, we hear about a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, but, but there's something else called Holy Ghost trafficking. And see, Holy Ghost trafficking, when it comes, when, when he comes upon you, that Holy Ghost trafficking, you start trafficking with a divine schedule. You start trafficking with the blessing of the Lord. You start trafficking with our anointing. You start trafficking with wisdom. You start trafficking with discretion. You start trafficking with patience. And this is all the working of the Holy Ghost. See, when the Holy Ghost moving, he'll, he'll, he'll teach you all the things that God said before you feel temptation. See, I want you to understand that temptation is Satan introducing you to another system that goes against your training. Makarapa. <laughs> Rebe Soto, you know what? You know what's going on? The Holy Ghost, when the Holy Ghost takes you over, you know what he does? He takes you into a system that God loves. But when there is another system, that's what temptation is. Temptation is Satan offering you another system. Satan saying, I, I, I know that you was trained to do this, but how about you consider this? I, I, I know that you, 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 you know, you know, you uh, know, uh, you know, God said not to go over there. But what if you go over there just for five minutes? You see what I'm saying? I, I, I know that Satan told God told you not to watch that, but just watch it for three minutes. Just just a little 10 minutes. That's all you need. See, see, Satan through temptation, introduces you to the sneakiness of considering what God has trained you is illegal. So saints, when you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost, the person of Jesus, the invisible man, he'll start talking to you and tell you, no, don't even play with it. See, the Holy Ghost, now watch this here. When you believe, you're still going to play with the devil. You say, prophet, how does that make sense if I believe I'm still going to play with the devil? Because saints in Acts chapter 19, the believers, they didn't have the Holy Ghost. So they still had stuff in their life that wasn't of God. And they was going to keep on continuing with it because the Holy Ghost didn't come upon them yet. Some of you are on here. The reason why religious people are burning in hell today, because they went to church all their life. They never became the church. They went to a building. They never met the builder. The builder is the only one that could enter you in to everlasting life. It's the only one that could set you free from your sit on earth is the only one that could deliver you from every demonic power, every oppressive power. The reason why you can't stop smoking because you ain't got the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will break off smoking. It'll deliver you from smoking. You'll never want another cigarette. You'll never want to get high off of weed, speed, or anything that you think you need because the Holy Ghost is a deliverer. That's what he is. He's a person. And when the Holy Ghost comes, he's in the spirit realm fighting for your soul. What did King Jesus say to Peter? He said, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith fell not. What was Jesus really praying for the Holy Ghost to empower and take over Peter? Because who's the Holy Ghost? He's the spirit of faith. What did the Bible say about the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? That one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of faith. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So saints, what you want to catch, Romans chapter 12 says that God has dealt to every man, Romans 12, 3, the measure of faith. 